So today we're going to do a boeuf bourguignon, which is much, almost exactly the same one that uh, Julia Child uh, has in her, what well, was in the movie, you know, it was in that movie, that Julia and Julia movie, um, and she was really famous for it. And also a little bit different because my uh, belle-mère uh, told me how she does hers, and so there's, there's some differences. But this is all the products that I bought. I'm at my mom's house for Christmas, and so I'm doing this for uh, a dinner party that I'm having tomorrow. Uh, for my friends here uh, in, uh, in North America. And so this is all the products. So this is Lardon, uh, which is side of pork smoked. And I'm gonna cut it up, you see. And then I have uh, the beef, which the which are cut up in pieces for me. And this is all the products that I got them. Bourgogne, uh, which is a Pinot, Pinot Noir vin. And so, and I even found the little uh, beef uh, bouillon, which is exactly what I use at home. A different, you know, different mark, but exactly the same thing. So. Everything I have uh, is perfect. So, what we're going to do is we're going to turn, we have a big, huge pot my mom uses for her spaghetti. And we're going to turn it on and get it nice and hot, which it is. There we go. And we're going to put a little bit of oil at the bottom. Not much, just a tiny bit. So you swirl your oil around so you have it nice on the bottom. In France, you know, we use lava for so many things. We put it in our salads, we put it in our quiches. And so a lot of people have asked me what exactly it is. And this I found uh, at Whole Foods. And it is, it's a Welshire, and it's exactly level. Okay, so with the lava, let me half of this. This is, let me just see here, 500 grams, so 250 grams. I'm cooking, by the way, for um, eight adults at a, a dinner party that I'm having here, and, I'm pro and I'd like to have a little bit left over, ideally. So this is smoked already, and I'm cutting it. It's already in uh, pieces, this one here, like bacon pieces, thick bacon pieces, and I'm cutting it now length or uh, widthwise to make what you know what I would can what we have at, at home is lardo. And we're going to turn it down just a bit, and you're gonna grill. <laughs> yeah, I'll go. You want to brown it. Careful because it spits, you know? I don't want it to hurt you. Hurt yourself. Like that. <laughs> you saw that. Anyway. Turn around. You want it to be, if you're doing this for a few minutes because what you want it to do is become nice and brown on all sides. Okay, so while that while that's browning over there, I put the lid back on. I'm gonna come back over to the station and cut up my uh, vegetables. I like to use some people like to cut these into rounds. You know the carrots. I have two large carrots, and uh, but I like to do it sort of in a in long lengths. I think it looks nicer in the actual stew when you serve it to have long lengths rather than the little tiny, not not too thin, you'll see that they're sort of, just kind of in fourths actually, and maybe in eighths if it's a really big carrot. It's so funny, this is my mom's kitchen, you can see how different it is from my little baby kitchen at home, but it is, um, and, and funny enough, the, pro the produce here is enormous, I think you guys have seen some other ones, uh, this is one onion. Our onions at home are, you know, maybe half that size. <laughs> it was really funny to see. I, for, I had forgotten totally the difference. And, um, okay, I'm just gonna, I can hear the sizzling, so I'm gonna go over here and just check it. Maybe turn it down just a smidgen. Yeah. It smells like bacon in here. It smells really good. <laughs> so now I'm doing the onion. I'm gonna put this whole onion in there. This is a, a red onion. It doesn't necessarily have to be a red onion. It can be a white onion, a cooking onion, a yellow onion. It doesn't, it doesn't actually matter. My mom already had this onion, and so I'm just going to go ahead and use it because it's a little bit old. So I'm just going to go ahead and use it so that we uh, don't waste it. Okay, so I do the onions like this. I just cut them. Then you're putting it into a salad, and I do it relatively thick. 
This is a very big onion, so I'm going to cut them in half. They're going to reduce right down a little bit. There we go. See how this is nice and crispy? I don't know if you can see in there. So now we're going to, to use a spatula. Just get the spatula out of here. Mom has so many utensils, it's so nice. Because you don't really want the oil. What you just want is the bacon. You're going to put it up to the side. If you go to the butcher and they, and they actually have a uh, real lavo, it's going to be a lot thicker. Like they're going to be almost like cubes, long, well, double double size cubes, which are thicker than this because this is, you know, are, was already cut into lengths. But it's not going to make any difference if you don't if you can't find the actual lavo cut into cubes. So leave all the all the fat in in the all the oil and fat in the uh, in the pot because now what you're going to do is brown your meat. And it's really important, just like they say in the movie Julie and Julie, which is actually true, you need to make sure that it's not wet. So you need to you need to use a paper towel and make sure that all the moisture is gone. And once it's gone, just put it to sizzle in there. Turn it back on. Turn it off. Put it on medium high. You're gonna let it sizzle in there. You're just gonna keep doing it. But it will not brown if it is wet. That's true. <laughs> it's not just Hollywood. In fact, Julia Child says it in her uh, in her recipe as well. So just... What you want to do with this is make sure that you brown it on all four sides of the meat. And you'll see that also when you go to your butcher, make sure that he gives you nice big chunks. So this is half the size of my ham. My hand's pretty small, but here's a, let me see what I can give you in a comparison. Um, right. How's it coming to me? Another trick too is once it starts to get really moist on the paper towel, turn it over because it'll start sticking real bad to the meat and it's hard to peel off the little pieces. So just keep adding them in so they're all browned on all four sides. Preheat your oven to 400. There we go. Okay, so once your pieces that are already in there are browned on all sides, you take them out and put them in with your lavo. You can add your other ones. Depending on how, how many people you're making for, you might not have room in your pot, which I don't hear, to brown them all at the same time. And don't forget, you're not trying to cook the meat all the way through. The idea is just to get it nice and brown on the outside. So now, in exactly the same oil and, uh, and grease that you had from the two meats that are beside, you're going to add your onions and let them saute until they're translucent, or almost translucent, and I'll show you. Medium high heat. It's important to do it in stages like this so that you actually get all that wonderful grease, actually, <laughs> to cook your vegetables in. Adds a really wonderful flavor. Keep that to the side for now, you don't need it back. You can see right away all the nice brown color. Can you show? And it's getting into the onion. And again, you can use any kind of onion that you want. It doesn't necessarily have to be um, a red onion. We're going to use two, two cloves of garlic. I have a really funny story about garlic. <laughs> But I'll tell you another time. Maybe I'll write about it. It's extremely funny. It's about my mom and garlic. So I chop mine roughly. Some recipes call for it to be mashed. 
I find it better when it's chopped. Just like that, not too much. I'm gonna go over here and check on our onions. You can see that they've sort of absorbed a lot of the uh, oil. Now what we're gonna do is add our carrots. Our long sticks of carrots. This is two large carrots chopped up in length, pretty, pretty chunky length, and one very large onion. Otherwise it would, it would be two back in France. <laughs> okay, so in, I'm gonna make my own uh, beef stock with three cups of water, and I'm gonna add two of my little Rion cubes. They also, my mom also uses this as a substitute, better than than a uh, bouillon. And the instructions are on the top. But what you want is three cups of whatever it is, that, however yours, you're gonna you're gonna make it. Essentially, with these, you just let it boil up, and then you stir, and it creates a wonderful. While the bouillon is working away, I am going to. So these are see the onions are basically translucent now. The carrots are not at all firm, not at all you know, half half cooked, and that is just perfect. So what we're going to do is we're going to reintroduce the meat. We're at, we're still on medium heat, huh? We were on high heat at the very beginning. We want all the juices back in there. You don't want to lose anything. The sauce of this is really absolutely phenomenal. That's what that's what you're making with all these juices. So you want to keep them. And reintroduce all of the meat. Stir it around. There's two of these. There we go. There we go. Just like this. Get the onions and the carrots on mixed in with the meat so that it's not all on the bottom. Just like that. We started off on high heat for the for the meat. We went to medium high heat for the vegetables, and now we're staying on medium high for this part. Not for very long; it's almost done. You need, by the way, I, I think I mentioned at the beginning, but you need one of these pots that you can go uh, both in the oven as well as um, on the stove. So we'll cover that back up. Which our wheel is almost ready. Boiling, so just keep stirring. I'm gonna let the thing dissolve inside. While we wait, we can add our salt and pepper. This is fabulous, look at this thing. It's my mom's, I love this thing. So, salt it. Don't be shy with your salt, unless of course you don't like salt. Okay, and then put the brown pepper. And do the same thing. Okay, and then we're gonna add some thyme. A good rule of thumb is about one teaspoon of um, salt, a half a teaspoon of pepper, and a half a teaspoon of thyme. I sort of do it freehand, I kind of cover it so it looks good, but that's a good rule of, rule of thumb. Okay, so we have a heaping tablespoon of pastry flour, it's whole wheat, doesn't matter. Um, and this is just to thicken up the sauce a bit. This is actually a bit too much, you don't want a heaping tablespoon. You want a tablespoon, there we go. And you sort of want to lightly coat it, particularly the beef. And then we're going to go back and toss all this. Put it on like that. Back before we put the bouillon, and we're going to toss it. You can see there's already quite a bit of liquid at the bottom. See that? We're going to coat the, the beef and toss it again. And then we are going to 